Hey, what's up everybody? Time for a video update. Now, every week in my MMT Trader Report, I have a section that I call Market Composition. And what that is, is I go over the weekly CFTC Commitment of Traders Report, and I break down the composition of the market participants in each uh, respective market, not in all the markets, but in the major ones that we follow, some currencies, the S&P, E-mini, gold, silver, natural gas, oil, etc. cetera. Um, and what I do there is I, um, I find the net position of the various market participants. So for example, um, let's take for example oil, you have the producers and the merchants, okay? They're in one category. You have swap dealers. Those would be like the big Wall Street investment banks like Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley. Then you have this, the speculators, which would break down into two classes of speculators. One would be leveraged money. Those are the large speculators, maybe futures funds, hedge funds, that sort of thing. And then the small speculators, the non-reportable positions. So what I do is I, I chart and I um, uh, find out the net position, that's longs minus shorts, and um, you know I talk about that. Now that is, uh, I've been hearing uh, a lot of people now sort of catching on to open interest and the commitment of traders report, you know, what I call market composition. And a lot of these people, they think they're very sophisticated and very savvy because they follow that data and they kind of understand what it means and, and they use it as sort of an indicator, right? For example, when the market gets very long speculators, uh, they might say, well, that's a market top, all the speculators are in, it's a crowded trade, it's going to reverse. Now, I tell people, and I get sometimes emails from my own subscribers saying, hey, Mike, I read this somewhere on some blog, and this guy's saying, you know, everybody's long oil, or they're long gold, or they're, they're short natural gas, or whatever. It's going to turn around. Shouldn't we be concerned? And I'm like, hold on a second, all right? Because there's a difference between something that is more or less technical in nature, like market composition, the temporary buildup or removal of market participants or concentration of market participants, that's one thing. And the big macroeconomic fundamentals, that is the real driving factors behind a trend or a move, which is, let's say, policy in most cases, that stays the same unless it is changed, all right? So the, the error that people make, the mistake that they make, is that they look at something very short term like market composition, like commitment of traders uh, and net positioning, and they try to say that that equates to some sort of a major change in the fundamentals of what is going on. It's not. And the analogy I like to give to people is the following. We have the weather and we have the climate, okay? The weather could be anything on any particular day. For example, winter time we know is cold. Doesn't matter where you live, northern hemisphere, uh, southern hemisphere, unless you live on the equator, but winter time is a cold season. Now, within winter, you might have a day or several days or even a week when you could have warm temperature. I mean, we had that. I live in New York. I think back in February, we had a couple of 70 degree days. But winter's going to be cold. We all know that. And that is the analogy I use be the, to describe the difference between market composition or market positioning and the overall fundamentals that are driving the market. So when you have a market that's going up, let's say oil, and then you have a concentration of speculators who got long at a certain price, a very large concentration of speculators who jumped in 
they're net long by a fairly large amount. You could look at that and say, hey, chances are we're going to have a pullback from these levels because everybody just jumped in. That is the weather. That is the weather. That is not the climate. The climate is the fundamentals. The fact that, whatever, OPEC is cutting production, or you have fiscal expansion, or you have price setting higher by a monetary authority which is raising inflation and that is percolating through all markets. That is the climate. That is not changing. So that's how you have to look at it. So for those of you who think you're very smart and you're very savvy, it's not my people in SEAL Team 6. They know what I'm talking about. But a lot of you out there, you think, oh, I read something on this blog and this guy said, all right, you know, I'm telling you, slow down. You have to understand the distinction between the weather which could last for a little while, and the climate, which is what it is, okay? So that's a very important factor. Uh, that, and I, I, can, I can explain it to you in real terms. Now, you know, I've been telling you that interest rates are going to rise, and the fundamental reason, and a lot of people say, yeah, we know because there's inflation and the dollar's going down. Uh, those are totally separate things. Those are totally separate things and they have really no bearing or just a very indirect bearing on the interest rate. The interest rates are going up for one reason and one reason alone, and that is because the monopolist, the Fed, the price setter when it comes to interest rates, is setting interest rates higher. That is the regime or that is the program they are on right now. So, and recently we have seen, let's take the 10 year treasury yield, it has backed off a little bit recently, although today as I speak, it is spiking up through 290, 2.9%, 2.93%, as I said it would. And by the way, I'll make this statement again, it's gonna hit, 3%. It's going to go above 3%. Okay? Unequivocally, I am telling you this right now. And I, I, you know, I laugh because I see people talking about their charts, a line on their chart, a line on the 10-year treasury yield. Oh, 3%. It's not going up there. It's not going above there because the, my line is there. As if, as if this arbitrary line that some guy drew on a chart, and we could all draw different lines, as if this arbitrary line dictates where interest rates are going to go. It's, I mean, if you think about it, it it's, it's mind-boggling. It's craziness. But most of you out there, not my people, not SEAL Team 6 people, but many of you out there will literally look at a piece of paper with it, some sort of arbitrary line drawn on it and say, that's it. That's not it. I'm telling you right now, and I will do a video which will be called, We Broke the Line. I'll tell you right now, that video is coming, all right? Now, what's interesting is that so many of you, you hear a lot of people say, we should end the Fed, we should end the Fed. And, you know, maybe there's an argument to be made about that. Maybe the Fed is, is um, you know, in the interest of, of the financial sector or the banking sector, whatever. That's a separate argument. But I always find it interesting because here we have a situation where the monopolist is telling you what it's going to do. It's literally giving you the game plan of how you can make money. Now think of a guy, if you were having a poker game, if you were in a poker game, and you had the biggest player at the table, right, the whale, unlimited amounts of money to blow, and he's showing you his hand, he's showing you the cards he's holding. Not only is he showing you the cards, he's telling you what cards he's going to play. And this guy's got unlimited money. He's basically saying, here, take all my money. I'm showing you the cards. I'm telling you what cards I'm going to play. And you're saying, no, no, we want to get rid of this guy. We don't want this guy anymore. 
you got to set aside your ideology. The existence of the Fed and fiscal authorities, if you understand how the monetary system functions, it is a gift. It is an absolute gift. So even if you ideologically are opposed to that, if you're smart, if you want money, if you want wealth, you have to separate yourself from your own self-defeating ideology and dogma and say, look, the monopolist is literally writing checks to me. I can't say, no, I don't want it. Otherwise, you are an irrational person. I am gladly taking that money. Gladly taking that money. So most people don't understand. They allow their closed-mindedness and their ideology and their dogma to get in the way. This is it, folks. I've said this so many times. This is an easy, easy game. All right, you make it hard on yourselves. You don't have mental game. You don't have mental game. Uh, on that note, I'll give you an example. This guy, most of you probably have heard of him, Dennis Gartman, a tremendous, almost astonishing contrary indicator whenever this guy says something. As a matter of fact, he's become almost like a caricature for that website blog, Zero Hedge. Every time he announces something on TV, Zero Hedge will post it up there and say, here's what Gartman said. And every single time, I mean, it is almost, it, it, it's almost like beyond understanding how every single time he could be wrong. So to give me an idea of, of, you know, lack of mental game, the other day, a few days ago, he says, I am going short crude oil because I have noticed that the backwardation, the, the term structure, he's saying, has flattened out a little bit. In other words, backwardation, the spot month trading at a premium to deferred contracts, it's usually considered a bullish thing. He's noticed that that spread, it didn't go away, it didn't flip back into contango, but he said it started to, to narrow. That's not a bad reason, although it ignores the fact that there still is a backwardation but the fact that it's narrowing, hey, you might want to take a shot on that. The market was down that day. He sold down. I wouldn't sell down. But the guy had, you know, a strategy based on something I thought, you know, reasonable. And now today, of course, crude's up, what, three, four bucks higher than where he sold. Big headline again on, on Zero Edge. Gartman we were terribly, horribly wrong. We got stopped out. Now, number one, he uses stops. You know I don't do that. But number two, and more importantly, when he gave his rationale for why he got out, he said the price reversed on us. The price reversed. You got in based on one rationale, which was the narrowing of the backwardation. Then you get out on something totally different. That is 100% lack of mental game, okay? That is self-sabotage. That is self-destruction. Anyone who does that gets in based on one set of criteria and then gets out based on another completely different set of criteria, you are self-sabotaging. You have no mental game. Zero mental game. One thing is not related to the other. If the original condition has, that caused you to get into that position has not reversed, then you have no signal to get out. The price is not the signal. The condition is the signal. So that's what I teach. Anyway, so understand the distinction between the weather and the climate. You can have a buildup in positions and it can signal a short-term correction in the main trend. But as long as the conditions are in place that created that trend, and in 99% of the cases it'll be policy, then whatever the market composition is, it is only a temporary factor. Bye-bye.